Hello and welcome to another Excel at the Office video and in this video I'm providing a presentation, uh, a template and a how-to on the subject of tomorrow's fish. So I'm calling this template tomorrow's fish. Now I'm doing this because often I find the templates uh, out of the box in Microsoft PowerPoint sometimes quite frustrating. You're quite limited in uh, what you can do. Some of the temp the designs are garish, uh, the text is restricted for when you want it. So the template affects everything in the uh, PowerPoint presentation. You don't have the freedom to use bespoke colored shapes or text or even fonts. It adapts everything. So I'm giving this simple template. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to start with a preposterous presentation, or you might find it preposterous. Then I'm going to uh, show you uh, the template itself and how I made it and uh, I'll link to the template below. So starting with the presentation you may be uh, wondering what on earth this, is this all about? So I've called this Tomorrow's Fish. So we're going into presentation mode by clicking uh, the button at the bottom there. So Tomorrow's Fish. So this is a free template based on, I was inspired to do this based on a recent visit on the uh, delightful Devon South Coast in Exmouth where there's a little restaurant called Rockfish. Uh, I visited there and one thing I noticed, I mean most people wouldn't think this is uh, a strange sentiment at all, but uh, my mind I think it's more than just uh, a statement of freshness and it's one of those things the more you think about it the more it seems a bit weird, like some words, you know, like, uh, I don't know, maybe fish. The more you stare at it, the more, the less it makes sense. Now let's just ponder that tagline. Yes, is it about freshness? Of course, it's a, a statement on how fresh they make their food down at Rockfish in Exmouth. But um, I wonder whether it's a bit more than that. Possibly not just about freshness, maybe the biggest interdimensional time-space bursting paradigm since Schrodinger's cat. And I believe it's worth exploring. So I, I had these questions for Rockfish that I'd like to pose based on that question of uh, or um, their tagline, tomorrow's fish are still in the sea. So here goes. Where are today's fish if tomorrow's fish are in the sea? Where's tomorrow's other things? If I catch a fish going fishing today, does that mean that fish has time travelled if it's in the sea and it's all tomorrow's fish that are in the sea? <laughs> I'm sorry, this really is ridiculous, but I, I, I found it funny. <laughs> so what else is in the sea? So you've said tomorrow's fish are still in the sea. It's quite a quite an um, interesting thing to ponder, but what else is in the sea? And are yesterday's fish now all dead? And what else can you tell me about the future? For example, where are tomorrow's other things? Are they also in the sea? Or are they elsewhere? But anyway, that's the way my mind works when I see an interestingly uh, and somewhat strangely grammatical uh, phrase or tagline of a business. It provided uh, no end of amusement for the night as I thought about these things but that's just the weird way my brain works but I, I thought it was good uh, subject matter for a template for the presentation and here's the light version of that template with the uh, blue bar at the top and uh, round bar at the bottom but just to summarize I thought um, there was a it was a quite a wide wide ranging menu uh, it was very very nice food actually a good good range of things to choose from generally around uh, 10 to 16 quid or so for a main which I thought was a reasonably fair price for some decent quality and uh, the staff are very friendly as you might expect and delivered a good service so if you're in the uh, marketing department of Rockfish you can feel free to use this template for your uh, activities if you're in the legal department, I uh, I mean no trouble whatsoever. <laughs> I hope you can take this 
uh, as intended. And if you're um, one of the chefs there, my compliments to you. And yeah, I'm already kind of regretting that terrible pun at the bottom there, but it, <laughs> overall it really was uh, quite nice. Uh, so I've just taken a couple of images from their website to demonstrate what you can do uh, in your slides when you're transitioning them. So just a, that's in a view of the inside of Exmouth uh, restaurant, nice view over the sea there. So if you're visiting South Devon, particularly Exmouth or the surrounding area on a staycation, I'd uh, highly recommend it having been there. I thought it was a very uh, decent place to eat. And now I'm thinking about that stupid pun. Why did I include that in there? Who knows? And you can just include a, a nice transition of images on the site, on, on your presentations, without needing to transition between slides. And that's an example there. And I've just overlaid there the outside picture of uh, Rockfish in Exmouth over there, over that image too. So that's the, my presentation on Rocks. Rock, rockfish in Exmouth and if you want any more templates or presentations or how to do stuff there's my website details here so what I'm going to do now is just show you some of the features um, I used for that uh, presentation as a bit of a run through so let's uh, get away from the nonsense of my mind ramblings and look to how I did some of these things. So you might have noticed I don't normally do fancy um, transitions uh, for slides because I think it's a bit unprofessional, uh, although this one is clearly not desired to be in, in the professional realm, so I thought for a bit of fun, because it's about fish, I thought the ripple effect was quite nice as a transition. Uh, you've got so several options here for the header slide. So this one I've just formatted the background in some light, uh, light blue graduated to white and then to a darker blue that where I've put my logo and link at the bottom and overlaid an image of a fish I found uh, uh, royalty free online. Um, so on the you do that by going to the design tab and you can choose the format background button at the top right here. I'm using uh, PowerPoint for Mac, but it's pretty much the same uh, PowerPoint for um, Windows based computers as well. So you see when you bring up that format ba background, you can choose either a solid fill, that looks quite nice, or the gradient fill I chose, and I added um, some bespoke uh, stops on this choosing my direction to make sure the gradient goes from uh, top to bottom like that or linear down you can do it the other way if you prefer but just get you choose those different options to what you prefer so that's one option of the uh, header slide you've got a couple of other options here so I quite like the uh, uh, blue deep blue um, color to put your heading or subheading on um, all I've done with that is the shapes, because as I mentioned at the start, the Excel, uh, sorry, the PowerPoint uh, Microsoft templates can be a bit annoying because they then, as the previews show here, you're restricted in your color scheme, uh, your text, and so on. Whereas if you just insert a simple shape, so in this case, I inserted the uh, rectangle to block off an area of the slide that I can choose to colour in. Uh, so this one is just a simple rectangle that I've moved to the background. So that's quite handy. Then for the main slide deck uh, I've given you some choices here. So again I use that uh, rectangle shape and just formatted it in the format bar here because I selected it uh, earlier to pop up, choosing a sol chosen a solid fill uh, with this quite nice uh, light teal colour. And then what I did, I inserted some circle shapes uh, and grouped them together. So uh, it's quite nice uh, if you've ever come across it, the rule of threes is quite good in presentations. 
omnium trium perfectum, as the uh, old uh, Latin goes, everything that's perfect comes in threes, because the human mind likes that. So that's quite a good tip, and maybe I'll do a presentation particularly about that tip uh, in another Excel at the Office video. So I've just used some kind of similar colour schemes here, just to just gently and subtly uh, add to the uh, a nice modern style while also it gives the impression of bubbles because it's a bit of a, a fishy theme so you might like uh, this these templates for your slides because it's quite bold or a slightly more subtle approach you might like the uh, <coughs> uh, deep blue at the top and white background with a dark blue text overlaid on it and slightly different colored uh, circles that are then so I put those circles on here via the shapes if I just show you a little how to and here's a good tip if you hold down shift as you're uh, dragging something it fixes the ac the axes for you so it makes it a perfect circle so that's holding down shift this is letting go on shift so it's a lot more free form so I included several circles and uh, just formatted them with a different uh, fill colour. Oftentimes I don't like lines on my shapes, so using the, uh, again, the shape format ribbon bar, choosing no outline, that's quite handy. And then once you've got one shape you're happy with, you can copy that. Uh, I'm using uh, Control uh, c for Windows, Command-C for Mac, and then uh, Control v to paste or command v to paste uh, you can do similar with right clicking and choosing copy if you prefer and then paste and I made that one a bit smaller uh, lined it up to the middle so in PowerPoint it's quite handy you can line things up and then I gave that a slightly different format and so on and once I had three together it's quite handy if you group items so I've selected uh, two together there by um, holding down shift as I'm selecting them and what you can do when you group them you just right click and choose group and that means they act as one so when you move them about you haven't got to always select multiple things that you're moving around and uh, with this template you might prefer to just remove this uh, bottom ridiculous pun if you prefer and just keep it to a simple uh, text format to display your text and, and a word of advice here um, I'm going to do a presentation all about how to some tips for delivering better presentations one thing I inc I'll be including on that is min minimize the amount of text you show on a page a lot of people they show ridiculous amounts of text uh, and you may as well just hand people a book if that's what you're going to do or just read to them you're there to present information yourself and your text should just be a bit of a prompt and ultimately it's a lot more accessible if your text is big and legible not just for uh, neurodiverse or um, uh, those with uh, issues with sight or other issues so you are appealing to a, a wider audience of everybody and in terms of the transitions, uh, so sorry, I covered transitions, I used the ripple effect, but in terms of animations, so I, a word of advice again, it's good to be subtle with your animations. So with these images, I just went to the animations tab at the top there, so that brings up the animations part of the ribbon. And I like the uh, ones that are categorized under basic or subtle. So it expands quite nice. Um, and or zooms quite nice so you can choose you can change your animations as you prefer and then one thing you can do is play around with the timing of it if you want the animation to be a little less fast than what was just previewed there for example you can open up the animation pane to just tinker with the timings and whether or not you want things to do something on a click or if you want an animation to happen two seconds after the previous things finished for example I'll, I'll show you another video on how to do that but it's just a light touch demo at the moment about this 
uh, template I created for you. And then uh, just to finish, this is just an image I've uh, captured from just summarizing my services. Sometimes it's quite good to uh, uh, use an image as a kind of slide background. Uh, I've since since I've done this, I've added some more videos, so I overlaid a couple of images here onto my original. So if I delete those, they're hiding behind there, so you'd never know from my presentation. And so, uh, yeah, that that's it. Very simple shapes design, simple transitions with a ripple effect, uh, some animations just to keep it dynamic, um, accessible and readable text using ideally. This is about as far as I go with white text on a ideally a better dark background. So I've made it bold so it's still legible. But dark text on a white background is best for accessibility. And uh, also limiting your text volume is good practice. So I hope you found this useful. I'm uh, going to make sure when I exit this I don't save my changes because it was perfect before I messed about with it like that. But I hope you find it useful and I'm going to put it in my... Uh, associated blog. I normally put a blog associated with these videos and the link to that will be below where you can go download for yourself my template called Tomorrow's Fish inspired by my visit to Rockfish in Exmouth. Uh, I hope you like uh, this video, share it if you be so kind and I'll see you again soon for another presentation instalment.